future ahead of them I just didn't see myself growing with the company anymore and my views are different from theirs and my goals for the future just required me to kind of branch off and have a new start and I'm very excited and proud to announce that I'm on euphoria now four flavors of the pre-workout are out right now my favorite formula very meticulously dosed elite taste and flavors we have natural berries strawberry watermelon pineapple mango, and the newest, black cherry, which I am unfortunately unable to have, which I will delve deeper into in this video. We're only sticking with the natty berries right now, but you'll understand why. Code DOM will get you 15% off of the order. There's only pre-workout out right now, 
but that's going to be changing very soon. It has been a while since I have made a YouTube video, let alone discussing the things that have been going on in my life for the last couple months. If you guys have been following me on any of my other social media platforms by now, you may know that I have been struggling with some digestion and GI tract complications for the last several months. <clears throat> I really haven't talked about it at all uh, on here or on my Instagram or pretty much anywhere while I was going through it because I wanted to try and tackle it behind closed doors, uh, but it's become such a prevalent issue in my life now that I, I feel that I should be talking about it more because the more that I seem to talk about it, the more that I realize that a lot of people are struggling with the same issue that I have been dealing with, and it has been quite the life-altering process to really tackle it and see what's going on. So this will be quite a long segment here, but we'll just dive right into it and the origin story of why I've been absent for so long and what has been going on and what we will be doing moving forward. So rewinding back to peak off season, uh, end of 2022, I was experiencing some appetite suppression, uh, bloating, things that you would normally associate uh, a huge bulk with not really having the room for food, feeling tired, lethargic at the time, and just feeling very sloppy. Alongside this, I would just have random sporadic cases of diarrhea or any kind of like gas epidemic or bloating. Um, I think I was doing up to like three protein shakes a day at this time just because my appetite was so horrendous. And I've notoriously had a bad appetite in the past. It's been... Um, it's been one of the reasons why it's so hard for me to put on size, especially when I was starting. I would have to, I would have to eat dirty calories because I didn't have the knowledge on food sources, nor did I really have the appetite to stuff around, you know, 4,000 calories of clean food a day. Appetite suppression and stuff was saying things that I didn't really raise any red flags towards because, you know, they're just things that I had experienced beforehand. So flash forwarding a couple months after that, I'm in prep at this point, and around 16 weeks out, when Emily and I first moved into this house that we're in here, I got really, really sick for two straight days, vomiting and diarrhea, like 102 degree fever, body chills, I couldn't eat anything. I think I had like one meal a day and then I would throw it up and then I would just lay in bed all day and sleep. And um, then randomly on the third day I woke up and I was all good, my body like filtered whatever I was feeling. I thought it was food poisoning, not really, con it was never confirmed if it was or wasn't, but that's what it felt like to me. Because <clears throat> I, I just couldn't eat anything. And I was just throwing up just everything in my stomach. Um, so while I woke up one morning and felt really good, the thing that did not leave after those two days of death was the diarrhea. It stayed from that point of 16 weeks out, which is, I don't know how long ago at this point. Um... Well, actually, no, it was 16 weeks ago today, or 16 weeks ago yesterday, or two days ago, whatever, that it actually happened. So from then until just around a week ago, I've been having like consistent chronic diarrhea since that time frame, and the process of solving it has been nothing short of just a complete fucking nightmare. So I talked to Kyle, I told him I was having some digestion issues, um... We kind of ran through a protocol. We ran through food sources. We ran through dietary changes. We ran through some lifestyle changes at the time. I was super very, I was very stressed. So that he thought that that could aid in a factor in digestion and all these kinds of things. So we looked at it from multiple perspectives and throughout the course from 16 to seven weeks out, we tried various things, supplement protocols, food source switching, um, taking like, a little bit of like a deload from training because I was training very intensely at the time um, and all these little micro steps and we were essentially shooting arrows in the dark because nothing really solved it we would have a temporary solution and then the issue would come back in again it was like a band-aid on it. it never never really solved the issue so at seven weeks out we had a call basically discussed that we were gonna cease the prep for the time being reevaluate and our plan after pausing it was to get this test done 
because during the time frame of me having these issues, I had gotten almost every test done because I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac, very health savvy, very health sensitive. So I got blood work done. I got an ultrasound done of my liver and my gallbladder. Everything came back normal. My blood work was the best it's been, to be honest, which is crazy given the circumstances that I was in prep at the time. So all my numbers were in range. The only thing that was ever so slightly out of range was my liver enzymes. They were just barely like 10 or 12 points above the reference range, which if you guys are familiar with during your prep is nothing significant at all. Honestly, I've had high liver enzymes since fucking when I was natural also. So at seven weeks out, he told me that we're going to stop the prep and we're going to go through Johnny, which is his senior. Johnny Castellina is the founder of ProFX, um, which is the coaching system that Kyle works for slash under slash with. Um, and basically they would outsource a test for this thing called a GI map test. And the name pretty much gives it away. It's a map of your entire gastrointestinal system. Um, most doctor's offices, they won't source the test for you. I went to multiple and they never really sourced the test. They said I'd have to outsource this. So it was like $500 or something like that. And essentially this test was going to be the, the be all end all. I can see what's going on in my system because, um, all, like I said, my liver came back normal, my gallbladder came back normal, all these things that people would immediately point fingers to all came back normal and I didn't have any signs of like an infection, I got stool cultures done, no funguses or pathogens or viruses or anything like that. So it was a two hands up, we have no idea what's going on moment. So we kind of did the be all end all and got the test done. So from seven weeks out, also at seven weeks out, came completely off of everything that I was running in the prep, um, just to like give my full, give my body like a complete detox and cleanse. It's been about seven weeks since I've come off of everything. So this is my like full natty state. So in the time frame of me waiting for the results of my GI map test, which is about like a week and a half, maybe two weeks, um, Kyle and I just kind of stuck to a base plan of just foods that I notoriously digest well, don't really have any issues with, and we were just waiting for the map results and we were going to go from there. So it was two weeks of just <sighs> coming off of prep and waiting for this thing that... Coming off of prep and waiting for the results of this thing that made me feel completely hopeless because I feel like we had tried everything beforehand. Uh, I didn't really have a lot of hope going into the GI map test. Uh, if anything, it was kind of like my last resort, like I said, kind of, you know, shot in the dark to see what would help me. Um, but I was in a very, very dark place for a quite a long time. Didn't want to train didn't want to eat, didn't want to do anything. I mean, alongside not having an appetite, the stress that I got from my mental state just put me in such a rut. I got sick so many times uh, throughout the course of having these GI issues because when your GI system is thrown off, you're extremely immunocompromised and I could just get sick by looking at a fucking pile of shit on the side of the sidewalk. Like, that's how crazy it was. I was just so receptive to viruses and bacteria and everything. I got, uh, it was a nightmare. So, so finally, the GI map results came back and I will throw them up on the screen while I briefly go over them. So to start at the top in the pathogen section, uh, you can see I am negative, don't have any kind of numerical readings for any of these bacterial pathogens, which is great. So I don't have a bacterial infection, don't have a virus, don't have anything like that. Moving on down to this specific bacteria, which is H. pylori, you can see I'm a little bit high in it, but it's not like breaking out of the reference, it's not breaking out of the reference range too much. These numbers, by the way, I'm not like super, super well versed in. I know that they're like to certain powers and everything, and that means like how potent the bacteria is in your system. But on the right is the reference range where you're supposed to be. On the left is the number where I tested for. So, According to my consultation, that bacteria flag is nothing super significant. Yes, it is high, but it's not like the cause of all my issues. Moving down, we have the commensal slash keystone bacteria. And for layman's terms, these are essentially the good bacteria because your body, 
Your body is composed of a lot of bacteria in your micro gut biome and you want good bacteria in there. Just good bacteria promotes digestion, flushing, all these kinds of things. It basically is your powerhouse of your body. So you can see I'm a little bit high in certain bacteria at the top and I'm deficient in certain bacteria towards the bottom. I fall in a little bit, a good reference range for pretty much every other thing, but you can see I'm very deficient in three bacteria that are on here. Um, and then another one, your Formicutes. I have a high Formicutes rate down there. So these aren't any kind of like dysbiosis patterns. I can't, we can't really tell that there's a certain thing that's causing all these issues. It's just a bunch of little tiny flags that are aiding towards one bigger issue, which is my digestion just being fucked. So going back down here, we have opportunistic slash overgrowth microbes. These are coined as the bad bacteria. Immediately off the bat, we have four high flags here and some whatever the fuck. Staph is one of them. Um, Streptog, like all these strange names. Uh, I'm essentially high in a couple bad bacteria. So they're overgrowing and they're flourishing uh, because bacteria's flourish off of the food that you eat, which is why dietary changes when you're assessing digestion are so important because these bacteria feed off of what you give it. So high in a couple of those. Going down to the parasite section, zilch on the parasites, which is a great look. Uh, my intestinal health markers, um, elastase one, we want to see that a little bit higher. All the other numbers are looking pretty good, uh, except for the last one, which is my zonulin, which basically me measures my intestinal permeability, which is the rate at which things are moving through my intestinal tract. And you can see that number is off the charts. So by that, you can basically decipher that uh, everything is moving through my body at lightning fucking speed. So it has zero time to get absorbed. It just goes in and out of me. And I actually tested this because when I got off of prep, um, I, my metabolism and my digestion were just firing. Like I said, everything was coming in and out through me. So I had like some pizza, cookies, popcorn, went and fucking like splurged out for one day. Uh, and then I was going to get back on plan just because I needed like the mental break from it. Didn't gain a single pound. It all went through me, all turned into diarrhea. Like it was just a shit show. Uh, but that basically confirmed that I had like some kind of big intestinal issues going on there. Going back down towards the bottom here, negative for all of these H. pylori anti antibiotic resistance genes, which is to be expected. So those are all of the numerical standpoints of my test. Moving on, I did have a consultation with Kyle and with Johnny, and this basically went over in depth more on what is going on and how to treat it moving forward. I will throw up the PDF file right here. You can see the date and these are all the notes that I'll be reading. So essentially no dysbiosis pattern, like I said, so there's no like root cause. This isn't Crohn's disease. This isn't celiac. I don't have diabetes, no kinds of um, obesity, detrimental returns or anything like that. Uh, commensal bacteria, good bacteria, low flags, insufficient beneficial bacteria, reduced mucosal health. So the mucus that's lining my intestines is negative down. Uh, protection against pathogens is down, which is why I kept getting sick. Chronic inflammation basically aids towards like a IBS kind of symptoms. So we're on the border of insufficient enzymes of just a couple enzymes in my bacterial lining um, that can be fixed. In terms of the bad bacteria growth, it reduces digestive function, aids inflammation, low stomach acid levels, I have loose stool, diarrhea, constipation, possible SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And that's basically where it's coming from. It last days one, like I measured, borderline insufficiency, we want that higher. Zonulin, which is the permeability, very, very high. So moving forward, we have the treatment plan from down here. So the first thing is 30 grams of glutamine throughout the day, 15 grams fasted, another 15 grams later with two ounces of aloe juice. I basically do this year round anyways, so that's not new. And then down here, we just have a metric ton of digestive aids, health supplements, things like that, liver detoxers, 
uh, that I'm taking all throughout the day. So I have to carry basically a pharmacy anywhere I go. We just got back from New Jersey yesterday and I had to meal prep and pack the whole weekend. And honestly, it's like harder than prep because I just have to, all these things are certain timing, 45 minutes prior to meal, with a meal, all these kinds of things. So um, you guys can pause the video, look through all these supplements here. They are essentially just bacteria restorers, digestive aids, whole nine yards. Um, some of these are very useful and will be staples moving forward for my situation. So uh, from, a, from a nutrition standpoint, my current diet plan is that consisting of a low FODMAP diet, so it has a low enzymatic activity, meaning that it doesn't cause like a lot of digestion activity. Gluten-free carbs are pretty much pre and post workout, and that's all, I'll get into it later. Increase in healthy fats from extra virgin olive oil, salmon, eggs, avocado, walnuts, mac nut oil, things such as that. Low refined sugars, slash carbs completely out of diet so i have no artificial sweeteners alongside that as well which pairs along with what i said earlier about being on euphoria now and david having the natural berries pre-workout which is sucralose free um naturally flavored stevia and monk fruit as the sweeteners that's a pre-workout that i can take because it doesn't have any harsh things like sucralose in it which are very very detrimental to your gut biome so those are essentially my notes. My diet plan right now is 180 grams of carbs on training days, zero grams of carbs on rest days. And I've completed one full week of it tomorrow. And um, it is very <laughs> difficult. I've quite, I've had quite a body composition reassess. My body composition has shifted a pretty drastic amount. Uh, I'm down to like 185 this morning, which is what I was peak prep per se, but the look is completely different. You know, my body image has faded in front of my eyes. It's very hard to look at, to be honest. Um, my pumps in the gym have been shit. You know, since none of my food is getting processed when I eat it, I don't have any conversion into glycogen. It just goes right through me. Uh, I can barely maintain liquids as well. I'm peeing all the time. All these kinds of things so that has been my situation moving forward I'm now a week on this diet like I said and since being a week on this diet uh, my symptoms have improved a lot all my stool is solid I don't bloat after pretty much any of my meals I do feel tired throughout the day because of low carbs but the fat energy makes up for it and I can definitely feel increased brain and cognitive activity from the higher fats rather than the carbs the carbs make me feel more sluggish rather than the fats I can prolonged energy throughout the day so that's my situation, just a bunch of shit, basically. Um, but it has been the reason why I haven't been active on pretty much a lot of my social media platforms just because it has taken the bulk of my mental state and uh, all my time, effort, and money because it has been quite expensive to fix all this stuff. So for you guys, things to look out for because a lot of people have asked me questions about this stuff. Do they have a similar kind of case scenario? It's all very subjective. Uh, the GI map test that I got will 100% determine if somebody has issues, um, but you could possibly pick up on it with other kinds of tests. You don't have to go through this route specifically. But if you're experiencing things like bloating, gas, vomiting, diarrhea after meals, and they're very like sporadic, um, those are digestive imbalances. So you have a GI imbalance. What could cause it? It's a bunch of different things. Is it something that you were born with? Is it a autoimmune disease? Was it something bad that you ate? Do things not agree with you? Everything that you put in your body, you should know what it is and you should pay attention to how you feel afterwards. So in my case, for example, a couple of years ago, I used to not digest fats pretty well. I didn't have an enzyme in me that was good for digesting fats, so things like avocado would just like make me have shit and diarrhea like instantly. Um, through assessing that, I built up the ability to digest all of these fats, no problem at all. Um, so it's very interesting to learn about, but I'm a depressed, super natty, animal food fueled human right now, you know? 
that is my situation. Uh, I have to train some back. I had to eat my pre-workout meal, which is literally just cream of rice and half a banana. So the plan moving forward, I don't really have a show in sight uh, for the rest of this year. I would like, I'm gonna talk to Kyle about it soon, but probably no shows for this year, just because given the circumstances, um, I would rather go into a prep in a very good spot than where I am right now, and I'm just not in a spot physically or mentally where I can go into a prep again. So I would rather save it for next year sometime, focus on my social media and content creation for the rest of this year, and focus on my self as a human and as a bodybuilder because there needs to be some maturing in both aspects of that realm. Hope you guys learned something from this video. It's all very interesting. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I will get back to you 100%. <clears throat> like I stated earlier, code DOM for 15% off of Euphoria. There's a lot of stuff in the pipeline, so be on the lookout for it. Enjoy the workout footage next. Every hit we take